Hey, welcome back to the Apex 2022 studio. It's Carm Capriato. Uh, my studio is overwhelming with great friends, good peoples. Uh, we're sharing microphones and headsets because we just decided to have everybody in here to pay homage to the Hudsons who have won some incredible awards this year. Yeah, my great friends, uh, Donnie and Christy Hudson from Troy Auto Care. Guys, uh, we'll, we'll just go around and introduce everybody. Uh, if you can see it, and even if you're hearing us, Donnie's been on the show before. I think so many people know Donnie Hudson and his great company, and, and of course his wife, Christy. And I think he's got you out there working, you know, on sh your own shops. I mean, it's a family thing, brother-in-law, you know, Donnie and Christy. It is an incredible organization. We hope to talk a little bit about that. Joelle Pollack is here and she is the lady in charge of Napa Auto Care. She just so happens to work for this guy, Jason Rainey, the vice president of Auto Care. Well, we, uh, we've had an incredible uh, couple of days here. We came out early out of the invitation of the Hutton's, Hus Hudson's. And I said, so you guys know how to party. You, <laughs> these people have influence in this town like no one that I know. Agreed. And they have a reason to party this year, so that's even better. Yeah, they do. And, and we were upstairs in July at the Napa Expo with our own identical studio at, at Expo when uh, the big names, you know, Troy Auto Care, uh, the Hudsons came over the big, big screen. you got to be so damn proud of that. Carm, it's been overwhelming. I mean, it has just been overwhelming. Since last year... Uh, during a BDG meeting when we got the call from the Auto Care Council telling us that we won 2022 Auto Care Center of the Year for Napa. I was stunned and I had to replay it. I, I knew we were nominated. I didn't understand it. So everybody's telling us we're getting ready to start training. No, no, they, they just said you won it. And that was just, it was, we were on cloud nine. Not only me, because it's not me, it's Christy, it's my brother Frank, yeah. it's all my employees back there is why we won that. But I was just thrilled and honored with that. And being presented out here at Expo uh, and recognized for it, can't top that. So we thought. Yeah, you thought, <laughs> you thought. I, I, as a little side note, I was lucky enough to be in that room in Atlanta right. when you guys made the call to Donnie. That's right, I was. Yeah. I was so, yeah, thank you, Jason, for giving me, uh, me that experience. It, when you called Donnie and he, he was like, Okay, so what are we here to talk about? He, he wins this award as humble as he possibly is. He wasn't even, he wasn't conscious of what happened. Right. I mean, we, were, right. we were all watching you. Well, okay, he, just he, another he, day. He had no idea that he was even submitted for it because Correct. Christy had been working with our team, uh, their DC team, out behind the scenes. So I think that was part of the reason why he was so floored yeah. by it. So I love this little discussion because this is the real world of honors that exist in our industry you know, how, how applications get set up and, and how they're discussed by a committee and a team. Yeah. And I have a little experience with that. And it is something I don't think the, the industry as a whole appreciates what goes into a nomination and what goes into picking and how important picking is. Yeah. And so what happens is the woman in auto care decide that Christy is the female shop owner of the year. And so, wow, we're into not a trifecta yet, but that's coming up. And you're getting that award in a few hours, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. And I am completely honored. Um, there's a lot of amazing women out there, many of who I have looked up to for many years. And to know that I'm amongst them now, it's, it's amazing. Um, However, I never would have made it this far without the help of Jason pushing me and uh, my wonderful mentor who pushed me even harder, Joelle. And she um, happens to be here. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> and, and there's a special uh, special event going on today, a year ago. Yeah, it's Christie's and uh, my one year anniversary of our, our mentorship to one it. another. I love it. <laughs> Was it, and you, you believe it was really an important thing to have Joel to either lean on or talk to or cry on? All of the above. <laughs> um, I've been nominated for this award a few years now, um, and I was getting a little frustrated, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and last year we decided that we were gonna get involved in the mentoring program. And 
Joelle has pushed me to my limits. <laughs> Um, all for the better. Well, wait a minute, Donnie, that's your job. <laughs> Why won't you answer my text? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that high-pitched cry? <laughs> but no, she, she, we had a discussion about my strengths and my weaknesses, and she grabbed those weaknesses and helped me overcome them. And we were actually just talking this morning, too, uh, at the Women in Auto Care breakfast, and... You know, I think it was Shari we were sitting with, and, you know, she said, well, I'm sure you've learned a lot from Christy, too. And, I mean, whether you're mentor, mentee, I mean, at the end of the day, it's working together because I've learned just as much from Christy, if not more. So it's been, it's been fun. I was so impressed years ago. Years ago when I first started, I went to a women in auto care conference. And there's a reason. I love hanging out with women. I mean, period. <laughs> and, I, and I never really knew that <laughs> until I started to think around I'm not going to any men's events here. What's going on? So anyway, and, and that's when the, the whole mentor-mentee thing came up. And I re I'll never forget, we were in Orlando. And the ladies got up who were the mentors and then the mentees. And they just paired them. I believe it was the start of the next season of mentor-mentee. I was so impressed with that. And now to hear the evolution of how important that program has been in the women in auto care program, here's, here's a great reason right here. And so it's, it's wonderful to see how it worked out. Now, you have a speech to give today, Christy. I do. Have you been working on it? I have. I, I hear that President Reagan's speechwriters are available. Well, do that you want would be me wonderful. Give uh, me someone. Yeah, he was. Are, are they really, though? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they wrote great speeches for Yeah, but guy. how old would they be now? Uh, maybe About in their... your age. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wow. And we're off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why this is family. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I so love that. Good pickup. Thank you. Yeah. I thought I was going to get hung on that one. She, she's learned well. Yeah. <laughs> my mentor. Yeah. And just because I've accomplished my goal, um, yeah. I was informed by a great mentor. You never fully accomplish a goal. So we will stay mentor, mentee. For a long while. Well, wow, yeah, that's that's so interesting, Jason. You never really accomplish a goal. Well, I think that um, I, that's what keeps you going. I mean, if you if you know, you look at these two. Um, it was only a few years ago they had Troy Auto Care one, uh, then two, then three. Now, soon maybe four. four. <laughs> they have their roadside program. I mean, uh, look. The reason why the women in auto care is so important and the reason why I, I really wanted this for her is because I wanted the world to know what I know. And so, you know, uh, when you look at the shop of the year for, for Napa and you know what goes into that award and having served on the council where that was selected before you, um, you know, there's 18,000 auto care centers out there and to be recognized for a year as being the best of the best um, is, I mean, that's a hell of a feat. And then you throw in a female shop owner of the year and you're bringing it, right? And so uh, I think Joel and, and Christy pairing up uh, for them to really engage and, and work together on it. Um, this is, I mean, this is the frosting on the cake yeah. for us. You know, Joel, we heard from Christy on how important the relationship was with you. How about your perspective? Did you learn anything from Christy? Well, I'll say just from connecting, and, and again, some months we would talk more, some weeks we would talk more, and then again, like Jason said, they're running three shops and they, they have a lot going on there too, but whether, whether she needed something related to this award or just anything in life, right? Um, you know, we, we, we can relate on the personal level and, and reach out for, for advice and feedback. And, you know, part of the when you match up as mentor mentee, you do your strengths and weaknesses. And, and I had to do the same. And we talked through that, too. So that's it, 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 but without breaching any confidentialities, I was looking for that. Even it had yep. to do with life. Business is business. Yep. But mentor mentees grow into something much bigger. Yep. Yeah. And then and then eventually which we still need to discuss because at the start of this we had an agreement that she would be my only mentee and i would forever be her only mentor but the reality is and you know we we, we kid about that but you need 
multiple mentors in your life. Um, are, are you are you being asked to leave? No, 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 no. It's 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 forever. This this it's on paper official. But Christy has plenty of mentors in her life. I have plenty of mentors in my life, and that's that's how you accomplish your goals or keep going and and, and moving forward. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's important to have somebody to lean on. Um, Trace, do me a favor. Don't ask to be uh, mentored by Joelle, because I've seen pictures. <laughs> With that being we said, we mentored in Buffalo in the olden days, so we, we yeah we've grown together, yeah, Tracy and I. We we have the relationship there. So oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Before we ever ever work together, there's some pictures of you guys partying back in the college days. Oh yeah, it's a Buffalo Bills game. Go oh, Bills! Oh, <laughs> Can't not throw that in here. You know, and it's that's whole six degrees of separation, Jason. Where you you know somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody, and ultimately, it's crazy how it all comes back full circle. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and I'll tell you. Uh, speaking of full circle, um, one of the things that I knew would work for this award, um, we actually put this award in Joelle's performance reviews. And the reason why we did it was not because I wanted this award so much, is, is I knew that at least three times during the year we'd have a chance to discuss what the progress looked like. Um, because it meant that much to all of us. Like the, I think the Female Shop Owner of the Year Award is one of the most prestigious honors you could get uh, in our industry because yeah. we don't have enough of them. And, right. and um, when, you, when you see how Christy runs her operation, which I've had a chance to do firsthand and which Joelle has had a chance to see firsthand, you want that story to get out there to the world. And so um, I knew that... Um, if, if Joelle and I would talk about it, she's very goal driven. And so I purposely made it one of her business goals. All I heard from that is I'm getting a fat raise next year. Oh, really? <laughs> I heard that. It wasn't a financial yeah. goal. Was that 2022 or 2023? I, we'll see. Ah, if, if you need me to help you. <laughs> I'm going to take her to the tallest building in Atlanta, raise her all the way to the top, and then bring her back down. <laughs> Jeez. Thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. I'll have, have another. another yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't feel like I wanted it to feel. Yeah. Let's, let's go do it again. <laughs> Wait a minute. I put my hand in my pocket and it's still empty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, so let's let's add the trifecta. Let's do it. So the trifecta is that Christy and Donnie and brother-in-law Frank are being honored by uh, Apex as the shop owner of the year here at Apex. And you were honored uh, at the keynote yesterday morning. And so it's a trifecta. And, and I have to tell you, when I, when I first heard and I heard about that, it was just one of those things I don't think will ever, ever, ever in our industry happen again. I will guarantee it won't. It's, uh, it's, I, I just don't, I, I mean, this is the hat trick yeah. of, of our industry. I, I, don't, I don't see how the, it could possibly happen. So how are you all about this, uh, Donnie? You got a, you got, he's got 110 employees. We met your uh, two sons. You brought almost all of your team down here. This is an exemplary uh, person to copy, to watch, to do. Well, thank you, Carm. Um, I, before we go into the Apex shop of the year, I just want to bring up a couple of things between the mentoring ship between um, Christy and Joelle. One of the things that really come out of out of this for me as I sit back is, you know, being a spouse and giving advice and, and for her to lean on, we, we are an amazing couple together. Um, but one of the things when she started her mentorship with Joelle is she came out of her shell. She was more confident. She was sure of herself. And those are life lessons she'll always have yeah and and that's one of the things that came out of that and I was very proud to see that because she's always shy behind the scenes you know she started coming you know she started working with me from the paramedic side after and uh, it's just been it, it just so I'm very proud of her she's just absolutely amazing very very proud of her. you know I'm glad to hear you say that now because their first event that they went to you texted me and said Christy's gone I'm doing payroll the system's down and I'm mad at you so I'm glad to hear you say that <laughs> That is after I received a text from uh, from Tracy, <laughs> Joelle, and, and Christy, 
uh, at some table with these tall cocktail glasses dressed up in, in the 70s outfit and oh, it was right. 10 o'clock at night i'm still at the shop so yeah there was something wrong with that picture <laughs> <laughs> oh my i remember that we were networking yeah that's, that's exactly what i was yeah. gonna say yeah. exactly yeah. Mentor. Yeah, yeah. Um, i i had that written down to talk about you really you redefined it <laughs> It has nothing to do with networking BDG, nothing. <laughs> so that was in the few times, uh, the several times I was upset with Jason. But, uh, but in all seriousness, it was just, it was an honor. An honor, and I was glad for her because she worked her butt off on this award. She really has. Not just this year, but in the past years. And for her growing up to where she runs her shop. She has got a shop that now I envy because I want my shops to be as organized and ran. A little bit different situation because, as you said, I got 115 employees at Troy Auto Care One, just out of Troy Auto Care One. And uh, that's a different animal. You know, her sales charts are post updated, her inventory is all done. I'm, I have managers on board and we're getting there, but it's just amazing to see how she flip flopped that shop. Uh, and in the, in the few years she's been there. Hey, it's no secret, we're facing a technician shortage, and Napa Auto Care has a solution with the Napa Auto Care Apprentice Program. The program was pioneered by one of our own. Pete McNeil and Master Technician Jeg Sorensen from McNeil's Auto Care in Sandy, Utah, realized that the problem of not having technicians available for hire was not going to solve itself and decided to take action and look at a different audience of individuals available for hire. A focus was put on younger individuals with the right passion, desire, and attitude to work in the automotive repair industry. Jake and Pete sought after these individuals and developed a technician apprentice program to give them the training needed to become a successful technician in today's world. The NAPA Auto Care Apprentice Program includes a comprehensive nine-stage curriculum that includes a variety of types of training, and they are classroom training videos exclusive to the apprentice program. Now, these videos provide in-depth training, from a successful master technician. Also, Autotech classes with instructor-led courses offered through Napa Autotech and Autotech eLearning. This web-based eLearning is designed to target specific training topics. And finally, hands-on learning. The apprentice will apply the skills gained from the classroom training videos, Autotech instructor-led training, and Autotech eLearnings in the shop with the guidance of a mentor. The apprentice program curriculum is competency-based, meaning an apprentice can move through each stage at a pace that best suits them. Most apprentices complete the program within two years. Upon completion, apprentices will have earned ASE G1, A4, A5, and AC certifications, adding industry validation to the skills an apprentice acquires. Look, having an apprentice in your shop will ultimately benefit your bottom line as they advance through the program. And in most cases, as the apprentice develops their skill set producing billable hours, you'll begin to see a growth in your gross profit by stage five. One of the largest barriers to entry for individuals looking to enter the automotive repair industry is the cost of tools. Now, keep your apprentice motivated with an apprentice toolkit. Now, Napa Auto Care has worked with our supplying partners to offer an exclusive comprehensive tool set, including a four-drawer tool card for all registered apprentices. Hey, to learn more, members can visit member.napaautocare.com. Amazing. We found out a whole bunch of stuff about Donnie when I did an episode with uh, with Christy on lean, okay, mm -hmm. and you know the process of minimalistic anything's right, and uh, we were on with Kareem Morsley and he was showing us the spaghetti diagram of what they were going through for an oil change and how can we reduce steps, make it more efficient, do more work, and Christy was our, our other person on and talking about the processes and the systems and the shortcuts. And I said, are you like this at home? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> she and then I said, is Donnie your opposite? And she says, oh, my God, he's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I still am. <laughs> but, uh, yes, it was... Uh, but it, it, again, uh, she worked really, really hard for this. She is, uh, she does learn a lot. She likes to be organized, and she always was organized, but not in the business sense. At home, yes. So again, going back to the mentorship, it's really opened her eyes up. She, we go to the BDG meetings, which we're, we're very heavily involved with, and you know, she is our secretary, but she takes more of a different role. You know, sometimes she feels a vice president, but she's 
always on top of things. Yeah. And I just love that. BDG, everyone, business development group. It's one of the premier things, events, networking groups uh, in the Napa organization. They're all over the country. They're kind of out of the DC. Donnie, you're the president of it. You've been asked to go all over the country and, and talk to people and about I how to- And I absolutely love doing that. Yeah. I absolutely do. Because there is no better, first of all, if you're an auto care center, you need to be an Napa Auto Care Center. And I'm not saying that because I'm sitting with Napa. I'm saying that because Napa has every tool in the toolbox to help you grow your business, run your business, be successful in your business. Yeah. And no, no other, you can always buy a part from somebody, but nobody's going to give you what Napa gives you. Get out the C note, pass it over. He already did before he yeah, walked right. in. Uh, Just check. Where, where are you then? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that being said, so we have this fantastic organization that Napa started as a business development group. And what that does is give our shop owners, fellow shop owners, facing the same challenges each and every day to get together, share, hey, what's going on with your shop? Here's what's going on with my shop. Share our strengths and weaknesses. Learn off of each other with best practices. And we all take something. But it goes beyond that. In our group, it does. I have technicians on loan right now. I've got uh, two, of my, two of my shops are short technicians. I'm very S blessed. Stop, wait a minute, listener, stop for a moment. You got to think about what Donnie just said. I have techs on loan to fellow BDG members. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never heard it. He told me the other night. I had never heard of that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, you know, when we have, and I'm like I said, I'm very fortunate, Carmen, to have the staff that I have. I have amazing staff. We have seven in the apprenticeship program now um, with Toronto, which is amazing. But yeah, a couple of my shop owners needed help, and I had extract swing, and I sent them there. Uh, Damien, my vice president, he's got, uh, he's had a couple of them now for a few weeks. One, I'm gonna let him keep full time, and then uh, I had uh, two other, two other tech assists at uh, another one of my. You're, uh, you're the you're the godfather of Detroit. Yeah, so. No, it's just again creating that culture that we work together, we share together. Because I know at a drop of a hat, Rob, I need somebody. Can you send somebody over here? I love it. Damien, I need somebody. Can you send somebody over? It's covered. No worries. Um, but it goes beyond that. It's relationships. Napa's a big family. Our business development group is a big family. It's relationships because we're building our relationships. We do so many things together. And I'm not talking elaborate cruises or anything like that. We are huge in, in the yeah. community service. Uh, and I want to tip my hat off. My fire chief told me, yeah, did that letter work that I sent in? And when I asked him about that, he was like, oh, no, it was for something else. I got you mixed up. But that was like a seed for winning Napa Auto Care Center of the Year. So because I got a little tidbit, but he, didn't, he just sent, sent me a letter. But, but anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out yeah. there. But uh, and going back real quick, because I don't want to forget, you know, so, yes, Napa Auto Care Center of the Year. My wife, female, you know, her recognition of being women in auto care, uh, female shop owner of the year, and then being this trifecta, this gold crown yeah. of winning Apex Shop of the Year. So you mentioned me bringing group my, my guys out. Yeah. You're absolutely you're absolutely right. I'm not going to come out here and 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 enjoy this award and celebrate this award without my heavy team players in the background. Right. So yes, I flew out 24 guys. Yes, they're having a great time. It's but it's because of them is why we're here. Is why we have everything we have. Twenty four. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. I mean, I met. Starting to get emotional. Now. Well, <laughs> good. You should be. You sh you should be because uh, you got a really big heart and you care. And and that's the story. I mean, if you're listening and you're struggling because you hear me on my soapbox all the time, stop being alone. Stop being alone there's there's groups like donnie's group there's private individual independent networking groups coaches have groups there you, you don't have to be alone and the whole net, uh, mentoring thing is, is is part of that message right i'm gonna let christy talk a little bit about the mentoring program because we are very very blessed to have that and we're very happy with where we're at where we're going with that um but on the business development group, you know, when we had this thing called COVID come through, a lot of business development groups quit seeing each other. They quit 
they quit collaborating, they quit getting together, they quit talking, they quit, they, a lot of them lost contact. And that's what I've been doing is going around and help, you know, instill that relate why it's important to keep your business development group, you know, up and running and, and, and get together and share ideas and thoughts and practices because every day is a challenge, especially in this industry, it's changing like this. And um, one of the things that uh, I really enjoy doing is, is talking about business development groups because when we were shut down, we did monthly Zoom meetings. And yes, we had a cocktail on, on Zoom. We talked about things, but we stayed together. Nobody felt left alone. We're all in this together. We're fighting this COVID together. What can we do to help? And we, if it could, Carmen, it could be just, I'm going to tell you how, here, here, just venting, listening. I like a mentorship program. Yeah. And just, they want to let it out. They have nobody else to let it out to, so let the group out. And maybe we can give them suggestions. Hey, try this. Maybe shut down on Saturdays temporarily. Different ideas and stuff. So it was just, we kept going. Jason, yeah. how important is the kind of information? We're going to get to Christy on the mentoring thing, but Donnie just prompted me to ask you, the kind of feedback that you get from your customers has got to help set the direction for Napa Auto Care. Well, it, it really does. And, you know, if you're me, why would you not want Donnie and Christy and Damien and Emmy to go visit other markets that are looking to form a BDG? Like, I joke about it all the time, but, you know, I've been with Napa 25 years, and sometimes they make me feel guilty because they love it more than me. And uh, it's the only thing I've ever done. And the passion just runs right through their veins. You heard them talk about uh, sharing texts, and it, it, that's really rare. But they share tools, they train together, and their community involvement is off the charts when, you, when they talk about the Genathon piece of it. Um, so if, if you're us, why would you not want to put them on a plane or put them in a car and go to a market and start to develop what they have. Yeah. And so in the ones that, you know, when they leave, they're, they, they almost feel like, oh my gosh, uh, why, why didn't we do this five years ago or 10 years ago? Um, so look, it, they, we put them out there for a reason and they were recognized by Napa Auto Care Centers all over the country for a reason. And they were re recognized by female, females in our industry for a reason and they were recognized by Apex for a reason. Um, so they're the cream of the crop for sure. One wow. of the things, Carm, that uh, I love doing uh, is I want to be realistic. So when, we, when we're asked to come to these different markets and talk about the auto care program, we, I'm excuse me, not only that, but our business development group, I have a, a phenomenal PowerPoint and I share our, our, our struggles, our struggles and our triumphs because it did not start off like that. It was a rocky start. We For the first year, it was a rocky start. It was a once in a month, maybe some of the guys would come and they'd sit and they would eat and the Napa DC was in charge of it. And it was kind of a waste of time. And then when they came to me, he says, look, we need you to get, step in and help with this. And because I didn't want to jump in and be that person that wanted to be the shining star. When I was asked to do that, I made these guys open up. I, the first thing I developed is we got to talk, guys. So I made, I made them go through their shop. Each month I picked a shop owner. They had to tell me five things they thought that they did that was unique to them in their shop. That opened floodgates. When Christy organized our very first community event and we had auto care dealers and Napa racing toilet seats, I mean racing toilets, uh, for Crohn's Wait a minute, disease. you put wheels on them things? Or yes, you... and motors. Right. Oh. <laughs> I'm more into scooters. <laughs> I see that. I had a bad impression. Um, <laughs> so, for the Crohn's and colitis <laughs> one that we did. Uh, <laughs> so, it, but that was there, because we are very heavy. I, talk, I made a joke about, you know, we do elaborate cruises and stuff, and, and God bless those BDG groups that go out and do those. I'm not telling you not to, because that's great bonding time. But man, save your strength, save your tools, save your funds, and put them into the community that supports you, that goes to you, that keeps you in business, that tells 15 family members about what this business does in our community. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. The thing that I, I'm, I'm amazed, having done this for seven years and a thousand plus podcasts, is to interview guys like Donnie that have that are in, in, in an interesting stage of their career and in their, in their life, and you may say, he made it. 
you may say that. But if I know you, you, you haven't made it yet, right? Absolutely be, not. You're still on the climb. My point to the listener is I, I can never be like Donnie. And the answer is Donnie was like you once if you were struggling. Absolutely. Trust me. When you start on day one, you need a great supplier relationship. You need a network. You need a coach. I mean, there's so many things that almost are required. Let me see. What do I got to do to survive? Take vitamin C. Take vitamin D. Because somebody wants to read you the litany of what you have to do to stay healthy. And in business, no different. Donnie, you're not talking and listening to Donnie and Christy because they turned the key in the door and they made it. So, I mean, we could do an episode on, tell us about day one and then day 200 and, you know. Sure. It, it's, it's, it's not an easy run to own your own business today, and especially in the automotive aftermarket. Right, right. And that's why uh, even in, in forcing a business development, a strong business development group now, and keeping what you have going and keeping it strong because you're right. This and, and this is we are in challenging times and we got challenging times coming ahead. So what better way of bonding through something and making it through together as a group versus you're out there by yourself. So you got some scars. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Donnie, I, I wanna have you back and I wanna talk about all the great things you do in the community as the fire chief. A ceiling falls on this guy. Yeah. At a house fire. And, and I'm sitting there just clinging to every word. Obviously, you're here, but it was your son who pulled the ceiling off of you. And he didn't even know it was you. Oh, my worse, God. Worse, worse than that is uh, we were, uh, it was about 1130 at night. We were going to the post office to drop bills off. And it was set to come out here and a structure fire came in. We rolled up. I got my gear on, went, went, went to work. Christy was still in the vehicle. She was in the truck in the command center, and she watched this event happen because we put the fire out. They were hoarders. They put the, we, we put the fire out. Two of my crew made it out, and I was the last one coming out. I never leave my crew behind. And the ceiling came in and, and brought me to the ground, and we got a crew to come in immediately and started pulling stuff off of me. It wasn't just the ceiling top. It was everything they had stored on top of it. She had no idea it was me until the white helmet come out, come out of the rubble. And then... Then they're asking, Chief One, are you okay? Chief One, Chief One. And I got on the radio and gave my, my CAN report on conditions, actions, and needs. And I was good. So the Lord would bless me. Okay. Time for Christy. <laughs> How do I follow that? Um. Anyway, um, just, just walk us down... Uh, the whole mentoring thing and it doesn't need to be a woman in auto care it could be in the bdg group where a couple of the spouses are together and say why don't you just you know why don't you go have coffee and just talk about the struggles of, uh, of the spouse uh, with the owner who works i don't know 60 70 hmm, 80 hours uh later than that sometimes it's 11 30 at night yeah <laughs> because it's it's the real world of being a being a small business person and, and, you know, three shops, maybe four, 100 employees, because you, you do all the roadside stuff. It's You're still small business. You're, you're a big business, but you're small business at heart, Donnie. And, Christy, go back to the any mentoring that went on in the BDG that we can encourage people to do locally. Yeah, so when we first started the BDG, um, it was 10 guys and me. Um, <laughs> and they all looked at me oddly when I kept showing up. But I'm used to that, so that's what being a woman in this field is. Um, but eventually we started going to events and I started to meet the wives. And they started to see that I was in the business and they'd ask questions and I'd say, you know, what do you do? And they're like, well, I sit home. You know, so I encouraged them that if they wanted to, they could definitely help out. Um, I don't know that the husbands all liked it in the beginning, but now we have, um, I think, seven of our 14 shops. The wives are all heavily involved in the day-to-day -day business. I didn't just throw them to the wolves. Uh, but just think about that. Ten, this is our 10-year anniversary for our business development group. Just think about that. She's the only one, and that is one thing that her, she is a trendsetter on trying to get that aspect of this field is for males only because that is absolutely the, the, the falsest thing you, that you could ever hear uh, so I'm very happy with that 
and she, you're right, it was struggling. I even told her at times, don't you, every time you come, you get upset. Just, just stay home. You didn't have to come. Don't put yourself through that. She goes, no, damn it. If I'm going to be part of this, I'm coming. I said, okay. Wow, that's a side of you I never knew. Ten years later, seven females are heavily activated, uh, heavily, heavily involved in their husband's shops with the business in one way or another. And we have seven that attend religiously each month for our business development group meeting. Not only are they showing there, but they're bringing things. What? And they're bringing suggestions. Where's Christy the role model for Absolutely, that? Absolutely, yeah. 100%. We have we we now have our official um, trailer, our business development group trailer that has tables. We have a phenomenal auto care business development group tent that's absolutely huge. That Damien and his wife put together in order. It's fully loaded. We can go anywhere. Set up display. We and we just did this weekend back to back. We had the uh, frightful 5K run, and then right after that we had trunk or treat with the police department, and it's loaded. It's it's staff, but you know we're getting Christy. I see these emails, and I still chuckle to this day. Hey, Chrissy, it's Pam. I just want to let you know, I thought about the trailer. I got a tote box, and we put pens and paper supplies and zip ties for all our banners and stuff like that. You know, again, involvement. Involvement. And that's what a good business development group. Ever take it to a career fair? I'm working on it. So, cool. Um, I was getting really involved with all the local schools, and then COVID hit. And when you went virtual, you lost all your automotive programs. Sure. So I am now on the board for our local vocational school, which is also my alma mater. Um, okay, let's talk about that. I, I'd love to sum this episode up with your story. Okay. And it is a very neat story. Please tell us. So when I was in high school, um, I was interested in the automotive field, so I started out in auto shop. Then my senior year, I was able to go to the vocational school for half a day where I took automotive. I loved it every day. My teacher was supportive. When I graduated, I eventually found a job. It was about an hour away in a really bad part of town. But my cousin worked there and he got me in as a, a lube tech at a gas station. So I thought I was queen of the world. And then I applied for college. And I went to my local community college excited as could be and on day one I walked into my first engine class and my instructor informed me I was a female he said sweetheart you're in the wrong room so I I proudly strutted up to him with my schedule and said no I'm not look this is your class and uh, he said no you're in the wrong room so I toughed it out for about two weeks and no matter how well I did on quizzes and tests my grade was always failing so I went to my counselor and they said, sweetie, maybe this isn't for you. So I went to the dean. And he said, sweetie, we should, let's find you a new career. And um, at that point, I had previously had a full ride scholarship I turned down. And I didn't know about student aid, so I was paying for it all myself. I said, well, what about all this money I spent? He said, we'll just zero it out like you never took any of these classes and you pick a new field. I was young, so I said, okay, I'm gonna be a firefighter and a paramedic. And uh, I got in my first EMT class and they welcomed me. Um, I took my paramedic. Eventually, I got my firefighting degree, which is when I met my wonderful husband. We met in bomb school for hazmat. Bomb school? Yeah. <laughs> What's that stand for? Bomb. Um, so we were on a, a special Bomb response school. team, and we had to deal with hazmat solution or hazmat situations, hazardous materials, bombs. Um, I also went in with the SWAT team, and uh, so we were learning how to properly defuse bombs in class together. And I asked him to be my partner, and he turned red and ran away. <laughs> That is true. Uh, <laughs> I hear that pause for a moment. <laughs> I, I, there's no denying it's, it's very. I still hear about that to this day. That's um, the longest pause I think I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just go back. We're not talking military. At the time we were going through this, there was a lot of. Um, it was, you know, after. At, well, well after 9 11, but they were still sending. Uh, bombs made of different uh, chemicals in the mail. People would open it and get sick and um, 
that was what we were doing. We were part of this hazmat response team. And yes, we were going to get in some nasty stuff and we were in these full encapsulated suits. And she turned and says, you want to be my partner? And I turned red and beeline somebody else. So of course she got the, the, the partner that nobody wanted. And uh, yeah, I don't think he made it through. He, he didn't make it out. But, and you uh, didn't have a Joel to call in, in, <laughs> at, at that time. I made it up to what her the I next do? day though. I did make it up to her the next day. Oh, yeah. Good for you. He brought me candy. He brought me jelly bellies. Wow. You sure do saying, not a sweet talk a girl. <laughs> it was me and 50 guys in the class, so I figured whoever I asked would say yes. After he said no, it left me with the creepiest guy in the class. <laughs> it took a little more than one bag of jelly bellies to win me back. Oh, my. God. This is a great sideline story. I love this. But, but part of the message here is how people are making decisions on women entering our industry. And it, I interviewed Jennifer Mahar earlier from Tech Force. I mean, they are busting their hump looking for, for to, to recruit you know, women into our industry. We need woman, more women at, at the service level. So I think the, the big key to the ending of my story is eventually, obviously, I met Donnie. I did the fire career, the EMS career. Eventually, it took a toll on me. And lo and behold, he had an auto shop. So I was like, hmm. He's like, you can come, you know, answer phones or something. I said, okay. So I started out answering the phones and then working the counter and dispatching for the tow trucks. And then I, I pushed more. I said, no, I think I want to be up front with the customers. Um, and, and were you going out at the time or no? Yeah. Oh, you were going out. Yep. At, okay. All right. And um, then I eventually got my ASC certification. Jeez. And then I said, you know what you need here? You need more girls. Uh -huh. So we started bringing girls in because up until then I was the only one they'd had. Um, and we, we built our force. Now we have, we have seven females across the three locations, the majority of which work the front end and are on the service counter. Okay. I have two female service managers but after all that getting involved with women in auto care the mentoring program everything I have done back when I was 18 and I walked in that class and that teacher said sweetie you're in the wrong room basically he reached in took my voice and pulled it out and I let him keep it for all those years yeah and it may have taken me makes me feel old um, a few years to get it back but women in auto care helped me give me that voice back and now that I have it I'm getting loud and I'm starting some girl. big things and things that I thought were going to be smaller you know Jason threw me under the bus at a at a meeting in front of all these vendors and made me share a story <laughs> and I was self-conscious of it at that time but after I finished all these vendors came up and said because my goal is to get in the schools, get the kids with the proper yeah. equipment, the yeah. new equipment, training them right. And all these vendors came up and wanted to help me. I moderated that panel. Yes, you did. Yeah, that was so good. So um, now I'm, I got, I keep adding more fuel to the fire and now I got I, big stuff coming. I know that you don't want to go backwards and, and be any less of a woman that you are, but would you ever, bump into or find or look up that <laughs> that instructor, I teacher, would... counselor who said, listen, woman, you got to pick a new career ever. That would that would be icing on the cake if I could see him. <laughs> I would love for him to just walk in my shop and want work done. I could say, oh, my sweetie, I think you're in the wrong shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. What a perfect, perfect ending to a great, great podcast. Thank you so much, Donnie. Christy Hudson, Troy Out of Care, Joelle Pollock, Jason Rainey. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks, Carl. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.